Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of my Terraform Basics series, a series intended to examine the fundamental components of Terraform. This time, we are going to talk about the core components that comprise Terraform. Let's dig in. In case you're not familiar with it already, Terraform is an automation tool for creating and managing infrastructure in any cloud or service using a domain-specific language called HCL to describe the desired state of an infrastructure environment. Terraform relies on several core components to do its job, and we'll be touching on each one in this video, starting with the Terraform binary. The Terraform binary is the main executable that is used to interact with Terraform. It is a command line tool that is used to initialize, plan, apply, and destroy managed infrastructure. The Terraform binary is also used to install and manage provider plugins, which we'll talk about in a moment. The core binary provides the key functionality of Terraform, including the following. Parsing configuration files written in either JSON or HCL. Building a dependency graph of configuration objects. Managing the contents of state data. Interacting with provider plugins planning and executing changes to infrastructure. The Terraform binary doesn't run as a service or from a central management point. It's simply a command line tool that executes whatever command you give it. We'll dig into the actual commands in a separate video, but for now, all you need to know is that all of your interactions with Terraform will be through the Terraform binary. As I mentioned, the Terraform binary handles all the core Terraform functionality, but it doesn't know how to talk to the various cloud providers and other services that exist out there. That's where provider plugins come in. They are the superpower that lets Terraform deploy to any cloud or service. Each provider plugin is an executable that contains an understanding of the API for a particular service, and it presents that API to Terraform by using a defined protocol. Terraform deals with things like resources, data sources, their attributes, and their lifecycle. A provider plugin abstracts the API of a service into objects and actions that Terraform understands. The most common provider plugins like AWS, Azure, and Kubernetes can be found on the Terraform public registry. You can also write your own provider plugins, but that is outside the realm of this video and Terraform basics in general. Terraform configuration files define the infrastructure that Terraform is meant to manage. They are written in either HashiCorp configuration language, HCL, or JSON, which stands for JavaScript Object Notation. JSON configuration files are typically written by another program, so you will be dealing with HCL files like 99% of the time. The HashiCorp configuration language is a declarative, domain-specific language that is meant to be both human-readable and machine-friendly. The syntax is relatively straightforward using a core construct called the configuration block, and hey, we're going to dig more into that in a future video. Terraform configuration files are typically named with the extension .tf, and Terraform will evaluate all such files it finds in the current working directory. All those files combine together into a single Terraform configuration and are known as the root module. Modules are something else that we'll get into in a future video. If the configuration files define the desired state of an infrastructure environment, then the state data is the mapping of that desired configuration to an actual environment being managed by Terraform. State data is represented using JSON and stored in a backend. By default, Terraform will store the state data in the current working directory in a file called terraform.tf state. State data is crucial to the operation of Terraform. Without a mapping between the configuration and the actual environment, Terraform has no idea which resources it's managing. State data also contains attributes about each object, which can be referenced by other objects in the configuration. And it contains metadata about Terraform itself, including what version of Terraform last edited the state data, 
the version of the state data format and a unique identifier for each instance of the state data. Although the target environment being managed by Terraform is technically not a core component of Terraform, it's also the reason for Terraform to exist in the first place. So I feel I would be remiss if I didn't mention it here. The target environment is the infrastructure that Terraform is managing. It could be a cloud provider like AWS or Azure, or it could be a local virtualization platform like VMware. It could even be a SaaS service like Datadog or PagerDuty. Basically, if it has an API, Terraform can manage it through a provider plugin. To complete our mental model of Terraform's core components, let's take a look at how they all fit together. We have the Terraform core binary that is responsible for key Terraform actions. It evaluates configuration files to determine a desired deployment. It uses provider plugins to speak to cloud services and provision infrastructure in a target environment. It then uses state data to store the mapping of configuration objects to actual objects in the target environment. All these components combine together to enable Terraform to manage your infrastructure as code. That's going to do it for this episode of Terraform Basics. If you'd like to continue your journey, the next video in the series should appear somewhere near my head, as well as a subscribe button if you think I've earned it. Until next time, stay healthy and stay safe out there. Bye for now.